So Jeff, I was interested in Julia back in 2014 from a language learning perspective. The language has come a long way. So I jumped back into the into the community and I find you know, probably about 20 times the packages I, I, I see, uh, you know, this this massive um, this massive organization behind uh, Julia. Would you say that you've hit escape velocity? Of course, with a new language, people always wonder, you know, is this thing going to really last or is it just going to peter out and people will move on to something else? Uh, I, th I think at this point, we, we're definitely at escape velocity. Uh, we, we've always been it, uh, in it for the long haul uh, among our, the, you know, the core group who, who maintains it. Uh, but now, now I th yeah, we, we've hit the point where people are, people are not going back. And what do you think helped you break through? Uh, it, was, it was a lot of things. A lot of it's just building brick by brick over time. Uh, we've always had a very long-term perspective. Uh, you know, like we worked on it for three years before even releasing anything. Uh, so we, we, we always knew, uh, you know, a language is a big uh, boil the ocean project. So it's just going to take a long time. Uh, so we've kind of always had that perspective. Uh, so we're, we're very patient and we, we go brick by brick. And then, of course, the 1.0 release was a big signaling event uh, that we think is kind of ready. Um, and we've just kept going ever since. So that 1.0 release, I remember being at an Elixir conference a couple of years ago. And one of the things that Jose... Uh, Valium said was that Elixir is done. And it shocked me at the time because you don't ever want to say done, but I think he was signaling the the um, community that was building libraries that it's safe to build on. So what has your right. experience been after, since you released 1.0 a couple of years ago? Uh, what types of, of libraries have been added? Um, and what what has this this this, um, this milestone meant to you? Oh, a, a, a lot has been added. I mean, we we just crossed four thousand packages, so it's 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 difficult to list off the top of my head. But there are a, a lot of uh, new kinds of infrastructural things, uh, stuff for web services and web development, uh, a lot of stuff going on in the machine learning uh, and what we call the scientific machine learning space. A uh, huge number of packages uh, coming online there. So as you know, our Groxio users are very excited about machine learning, and that's why we're doing this Elixir module. So can you tell me some of the special special sauce that Julia itself brings to the machine learning space? Yes. So with, uh, uh, you know, machine learning uh, brings together a lot of different things because you're going to have uh, usually some amount of data coming in. Uh, which requires a certain amount of infrastructure and support for data handling. Uh, and then you you're going to have all sorts of domain knowledge that's involved uh, for whatever domain you're applying it to. Uh, and then you have uh, machine learning specific kinds of libraries like uh, automatic differentiation and the tools for actually putting together, uh, you know, the neural nets and the layers and having libraries of pre-built models and all of that. So it's a, it's a lot of different pieces. And it's also something that could, you know, it could potentially touch anything because you know, one of the reasons people are excited about machine learning is that you can, it's a, it's a very, very general, you know, analysis kind of framework that you can basically apply to anything. You know, in, in theory, you can start with any program and basically train a model to learn how that program works, essentially. And you could, you can replace any program with a machine learning model of whatever size you want that tries to approximate it. This is why people called machine learning software 2.0, because it's sort of a different way of thinking about potentially almost any software. I don't think it's really going to replace all pieces of software. That's pretty clear, but, but I think that's, that's why people call it that. Julia seems to have unusually high amounts of composability. Uh, the packages in Julia tend to work together extremely well. Uh, like you can have, you know, you, you can have um, exotic data types like intervals or things with physical units, and you can just put them directly into the differential equation solver and it just works. Uh, and then you can put that into a machine learning system and it just works. Uh, and we have, uh, for doing back, back propagation and machine learning, uh, we have automatic differentiation that has very, very broad coverage. It basically works with any program. So whatever program you have, we can differentiate it and you can use it in an ML stack. Uh, so this kind of very high level of composability that I think comes from the language itself uh, is very helpful for those kinds of systems. What's your favorite language feature? I know that's kind of like asking you, 
uh, who your favorite kid is. But <laughs> what's what's your favorite language feature? Multiple dispatch. That's that, that's an easy one, I think. So that's what Chris said. Also, uh, that's probably not a huge surprise, right? One of the things I thought was really cool about Julia is that um, you know you mentioned kind of the two secret sauce words to me, and that's that's the composability um, meets really the um, ability to drop down to a lower level of abstraction, right? Um, so you could you could live in that functional world for a bit as you need to, and then you can drop down to have um, the imperative. Um, all the features that make Julia fast, right? We love drill down. So a lot of um, a lot of people have kind of an impression that you know if a language is high level and easy to use, then there can't be anything like you know talking about the number of bits in an integer or something because that's just low level. You know that's no good. Uh, and we've never had that perspective. You know if you can be writing some very high level thing, uh, but then you suddenly want to say, oh, this by the way, this is a 16 bit integer. You know, why not? If you want to talk about that, you know, you go ahead and do that. Um, so to get yeah, to many people, Julia has a slightly different kind of feel that maybe reflects, you know, our, our personalities like, you know, Stefan and Veral and, and Alan and me that we've, this is just how, how we like to do things. I, you know, I, I, I want to be able to get down to the, to the bits when I want to. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us, Jeff. Oh, thank you, Bruce. This was uh, fun.